fellow warriors. This is Sheldor the Conqueror. We are about to enter Axel's fortress. Now this is a long run, so let's do another bladder check. <laughs> All right, Barry, we'll wait for you again, but you really should see a doctor. <laughs> Sheldor is AFK. Penny, are you experiencing some sort of difficulty? Yes, I can't get my stupid door open. You appear to have put your car key in the door lock. Are you aware of that? Yeah. All right, then. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Would it be possible for you to do this a little more quietly? I can't get the damn key out. Well, it's not surprising. That Baldwin lock on your door uses traditional edge-mounted cylinders, whereas the key for your Volkswagen uses a center cylinder system. Thank you, Sheldon. You're welcome. Point of inquiry, why did you put your car key in the door lock? Why? I'll tell you why. Because today I had an audition. It took me two hours to get there. I waited an hour for my turn. And before I could even start, they told me I looked too Midwest for the part. Too Midwest? What the hell does that even mean? Well, the American Midwest was mostly settled by Scandinavian and Germanic people. So they have a characteristic facial I know what it means, Sheldon! God! You know, I have been in L.A. for almost two years now, and I haven't gotten a single acting job. I have accomplished nothing. I haven't gotten a raise at work. I haven't even had sex in six months. And just now, when I was walking up those stairs, a fly flew in my mouth, and I ate it! Well, actually, insects are a dietary staple in many cultures. They're almost pure protein. I believe the condensation on your frozen foods weakened the structural integrity of the bag. <laughs> but returning to your key conundrum, perhaps you should call a locksmith and have him open the door for you. I did. He said he'll get here when he gets here. And you're frustrated because he phrased his reply in the form of a meaningless tautology? No! They're there. <laughs> Would you prefer to wait in our apartment? No, Sheldon, I'd rather sit on this freezing cold floor sobbing like a three-year-old. All right, then. For God's sake. Just when I think I've gotten the hang of sarcasm. <laughs> Worst renaissance fair ever. Please let it go, Sheldon. It was rife with historical inaccuracies. For example, the tavern girl serving flagons of mead. Now, her costume was obviously Germanic, but in 1487, the Bavarian purity laws, or Reinheitsgebot, severely limited the availability of mead. At best, they would have had some sort of spiced wine. You're nitpicking. Oh, 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 really? Well, here's another nit for you. The flagons would not have been made of polypropylene. Renaissance fairs aren't about historical accuracy. They're about taking chubby girls who work at Kinko's and lacing them up in corsets so tight their bosom jumps out and says, howdy. Bosoms would not have said howdy in the 15th century. If anything, they would have said huzzah. I don't care what the bosoms say, Sheldon. I just want to be part of the conversation. Hi, guys. Looks like you've been to the Renaissance Fair, I'm hoping. <laughs> Renaissance fair, more of a medieval slash age of enlightenment slash any excuse to wear a codpiece fair. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, you guys, this is my friend Eric. Hello. Hi. Hey. So, yeah, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you too. We should probably go. Yeah. Bye, guys. Like your hat. <laughs> Thanks, my mom made it. Penny with a new guy, Trey, awkward. It wasn't awkward. It wasn't fun. Besides, what's the big deal? We dated, we, we stopped dating, and now we're both moving on. By moving on, do you mean she's going out with other men and you spend the afternoon making 15th century soap with Wolowitz? That was not 15th century soap. My god, those people need to learn. You can't just put ye old in front of anything you want and expect to get away with it. I mean, please just go in. My chainmail's stuck in my underwear. 
You're wearing modern underwear? Relatively modern. <laughs> Why, what are you wearing? I fashioned historically accurate undergarments out of linen. You went out and bought linen? Don't be silly. I borrowed one of your pillowcases. <laughs> borrowed? Your argument is lacking in all scientific merit. It is well established. Superman cleans his uniform by flying into Earth's yellow sun, which incinerates any contaminant matter and leaves the invulnerable Kryptonian fabric unharmed and daisy fresh. <laughs> What if he gets something Kryptonian on it? Like what? I don't know, Kryptonian mustard. Yeah. I think we can safely assume that all Kryptonian condiments were destroyed when the planet Krypton exploded. <laughs> or it turned into mustard kryptonite, the only way to destroy a rogue Kryptonian hot dog threatening Earth. Raj, please, let's stay serious here. <laughs> Superman's body is Kryptonian, therefore his sweat is Kryptonian. Yeah, what about Kryptonian pit stains? <laughs> Superman doesn't sweat on Earth. Okay, he's invited for dinner in the bottle city of Kandor. He miniaturizes himself, enters the city where he loses his superpowers. Now, before dinner, his host says, who's up for a little Kryptonian tetherball? <laughs> Superman says, sure, works up a sweat, comes back to Earth, his uniform now stained with indestructible Kryptonian perspiration. <laughs> Booyah. <laughs> Superman would have taken his uniform to a Kandorian dry cleaner before he left the bottle. <laughs> Kandorian dry cleaner? I give up. You can't have a rational argument with this man. <laughs> All right, that's the last servo. Behold, the mobile omnidirectional neutralization and termination eradicator. Or Monty. <laughs> Featuring one articulated razor sharp killing saw, one polycarbonate grinding and flipping wheel, steel armor plate, exoskeleton top and bottom, and enough horsepower to drive 110 pounds of mechanized death from zero to holy crap in 4.8 seconds. <laughs> Is it wrong to say I love our killer robot? As with my father, I both love and fear it. All right, enough chit chat. Let's destroy something. One, two, three, go! Okay, what should be first to taste the wrath of Monty? Maybe we should start small. Okay. Oh, perhaps today is the day we finally find out what's inside the magic eight ball. <laughs> did it when I was four. It's an icosahedral dye floating in tinted blue water. Man, call spoiler alert before you say things like that. How about the toaster oven? What did the toaster oven ever do to you? What did I ever do to Jimmy Mullins in the third grade? He still punched me in the face with my own fists. <laughs> Sorry, you little nerd. You were just in the wrong boy's room at the wrong time. Gentlemen, goggles. Yeah, this is an auspicious moment. You, like Robert Oppenheimer or Neil Armstrong, we need the appropriate words to mark this historic scientific event. How about die, toaster, die? <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> All right, what's next? No, I think I'm just going to stay in tonight and do laundry. So how was work today? Busy. Huh? I removed an appendix, a gallbladder, and about a foot and a half of bowel. I'm hoping that was three different guys. <laughs> no, just the one. He didn't make it. So, how was your day? Well, you know, I'm a physicist, so I thought about stuff. That's it? I wrote some of it down. <laughs> Are you done eating? Uh, yeah. Oh, good. 
Huh. <laughs> if I knew you were waiting, I would have swallowed that lasagna whole. <laughs> Dr. Stephanie Barnett, leave a message. Hey, Steph, it's me again, Howard. Listen, if you're free Friday, maybe we could have a little something to eat at my place. My mom cooks a hell of a brisket. <laughs> Let me know. It's Howard. I've had her brisket melt in your mouth. <laughs> We should think about going to the bedroom. Uh, that's a good idea. There's a bed in there, and I'm very, very, very pro bed. Mm. <laughs> You've reached Dr. Stephanie Barnett. Leave a message. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> Just want to let you know the head count for dinner Friday has gone up. My Aunt Betty and Uncle Elliot are coming in from Palm Springs. Oh, and if anybody should ask, you're half Jewish on your mother's side. <laughs> okay, call me. It's Howard. Don't you think we should tell him you're not interested? Do you want me to stop and call him back right now? Dear God, no. <laughs> <laughs> You've reached Dr. Stephanie Barnett. Leave a message. Hey, it's me again, Howard. Listen, my cousins from Fort Lauderdale are flying in to meet you, so that means we're gonna have to move the dinner to a restaurant. Tell her we're going to the Olive Garden! <laughs> Going to the Olive Garden, Ma! Oh, it's the big shot with his red lobster! I'll call you back when we firm up the details. <laughs> it's Howard. Bên nhau rơi ánh trăng vàng Nghe em thu thì nhẹ nhàng bên tai Em nói nhiều đến tương lai Nói đến hạnh phúc của hai chúng mình anh hôn em nụ hôn nâu tình chẳng xoay mặt nước in hình đôi ta không gian mặt sâu sao hoa cành đêm như thể ngàn hoa sắc màu dập dìu sập dìu như cánh hài âu vòng tay ôm ca biến đâu tình nồng bên nhau Hey guys, this package came free. <laughs> Dr. Cooper is working. Yes, I'm close to a breakthrough. <laughs> oh, tickles. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Holy crap on a crap. Hey, Penny. Hi, you, know, you probably don't want to go in there. Why, what are they doing? You know, the only way I could explain it would be in a therapist office with dolls. <laughs> oh boy. Dr. Cooper's working. Yeah, I can see that. Sheldon, Halo Night, Cuthra Polly, is you coming? Oh, yes, it's Halo Night. Let me just dry my tootsies. You're not going to Halo Night. Yes, I am. It's Wednesday. Wednesday's Halo night. Didn't a great man once say, science demands nothing less than the fervent and unconditional dedication of our entire lives? He did. And who was that great man? Me. <laughs> Sorry, Leonard. Seriously? You're not coming? But you heard her. How can I argue with me? <laughs> OK, well, once again, you guys have a good Whatever this is. Dr. Cooper, I have to tell you, your friends are holding you back. I prefer to think of it as I'm pulling them forward. <laughs> Halo Knight, a man with your intellectual gifts doesn't waste an evening playing video games. He does on Wednesdays. Not if he wants a Nobel Prize. He does want that. <laughs> Does a man with my intellectual gifts play paintball on weekends? What do you think? Drat. <laughs> now, shall we get back to work? I suppose. 
Battlestar Galactica comes on tonight. I guess I can wait for the DVD. <laughs> and then never, ever watch it. <laughs>